Accorda, the Fortune Rove, Greeny Old is in session old show, at a Sulum Gluston Shiv May, owner show prevail in the Scully Glorically Reduce, Augsburg Patricia, I know you kindly begin a couple of seconds. So you're very welcome to this uh, information session. I appreciate uh, most of you would have been here last Wednesday with us at the parent teacher meeting, and this is kind of a follow on session, I suppose, where Patricia is going through uh, the CEO system and careers and uh, more information regarding, I suppose, leaving sort points and, and, and stuff like that. So, um, what I I won't be speaking to you much tonight. Uh, I'll let Patricia do the talking. She knows she's the expert in this area. Um, but we do have on the right hand side up top, you should see a question and answers um, tab there, and a chat function as well. I'd be grateful if somebody could put a thumbs up just to say that they can hear me. Go uh, question to me as well. Boom, a gober. So if I see a thumbs up there, we know we're, we're all okay. Let's go back with a gober and chin. Let's fill it in and chin. Right hand side is a chat there. Just uh, or dog sus, a corral, no rego machine. I know good mini gober carcular. Okay, so the question and current impression. So you'll see also on the right hand side is a, a Q and A um, area where you can uh, you can write questions and um, we'll and Patricia can, we'll then do our best to answer those questions uh, during the night. So just checking out uh, if anybody there who who has uh, can hear us. All right, we all okay. People can hear us there. Still waiting there for somebody. Uh, thumbs up. Okay, brilliant. Okay, that's seems to. Listen, Grumina Malga. Okay, and it's so big. Patricia Kantlish and uh, Ben McLear Kantle, Michaela Egendera Mota in question. Okay, so. Uh, my Councillor Reid Wagi and Tafni Shakatsa would have met a lot of you last week, but I just felt that it was important to just dedicate this evening to just the whole third level process and the whole CEO process. And if you had any further questions, because I know you were extremely busy talking to the teachers about your sons and daughters with regard to their progress. So this evening is just to talk you through all the different ways in which your son or daughter can apply for courses, not just to the CAO, they can also apply to Northern Ireland, Scotland, England, Wales, and quite a lot of students now go to Europe as well. And some students decide maybe not to go to college this year, or they may go and do a post leaving cert course. That's a one year course whereby they can just, there's no points required, and they can just take a breather before they go to third level college. And there's also apprenticeship. So there are, there's something there for everybody. Okay, one for everybody in the audience, as they say. Okay, so at the end of the day, what I just want to get through to you, your support for your sons and daughters is extremely important, but it is their choice at the end of the day, and it is their responsibility to pick the course that they want and allow them to make that decision. Because very often if we sort of mother them too much, they maybe go, go along with your choice as opposed to their own choice and then maybe drop out, you know, a few weeks into the course, which none of us want to happen. So, of course, help and support them in every way you can and listen to their concerns but allow them to make that choice at the end of the day, okay? So the, the kind of things that will help that process is to let them consider the subjects that are taught on the course. They, it, they, this is a process. Very rarely does anybody know exactly what they want to do. It is a process and it is a process that occurs over the two years of their senior cycle. A lot of research is required and a lot of questioning going to open days, talking to students that are maybe in the second or third year of the course and talking to you know, professionals, it does take time to actually arrive at the proper decision. So what options are within the course? Are there good career opportunities perhaps? Will distance from home be a factor and distance from home is becoming more and more of a factor because it's so expensive and not only is it so expensive, but it's very difficult depending on where you go to get accommodation. 
you know, we've heard, you know, awful stories in the news about students sleeping in their cars, trying to commute to college, and it's becoming very difficult. So is distance going to be a problem for you, son or daughter? Because of the cost, the fees, and private colleges are also in the in factor. And in fact, if you look at the fees for private colleges, there's not a whole lot of difference today between that and the public, as they say, the public colleges, because when you pay the registration fee, which was 3,000 euro and was reduced to 2,000 this year, I would imagine it would probably stay at the 2,000 euro, but nevertheless, you have uh, astronomical accommodation fees as well. So these are all factors that you must consider. So Colin and told us like all, so where are you going to get this information? Where are your students going to get this information? So there are what they call prospectuses. This is a book list that comes from every college in the country. It comes into the school. All this information is also on the college websites. There are two very good careers websites called Qualifax and Careers Portal. So open days are another very, very good option for students if they're considering going to a college that they attend the open day. They can talk to other students, talk to friends, families, their teachers here in the school and myself. But open days are very important for a number of reasons. Some students, and it has even happened this year, they have got what they taught their dream course. They left Galway, they left home, and they went either to Dublin or Cork or Limerick. And having been there, they, they found it extremely difficult. They, they were lonely. They just didn't like the look of the building or they didn't like the college. And they just, they, they ended up coming back home within two to three weeks. So it's very, very important that they actually see where they're going to be actually studying. The, the actual building can have either a positive or a negative effect on your son or daughter, perhaps. Others fly away from home and they're extremely happy and successful. Okay, so as well as having the prospectuses and the college websites, the CAO has a handbook or they used to have a handbook that they would print and I would be able to give each student a handbook. However, they have stopped printing the handbook and they now have the handbook online. So there's two, ha two versions of the handbook this year. There's what they call a personalized handbook online and there's also a PDF downloadable handbook. So they, I was actually having, a, it's just after coming out and I was after having a look at the personalized handbook and it is quite user friendly. So just have a look at that yourselves as well. You just need to go into cao.ie and you will see the handbook. And you will also see a PDF version where you can download. Okay. So the CA opened on the 4th of November. So what that means is that your son or daughter can now register their interest in attending a third level college. So they, op they have options to put down 20 courses, 10 courses at level eight. So all universities offer level eight courses only and 10 courses at level six, seven. So the yeah, technological universities and the institutes of technology offer level six, seven and eight. So we now are in, in a very good position in Galway where we now have two universities because GMI, GMIT is now a university and is part of the Atlantic Technological Universities. So they offer courses, as I said, at level six, seven, and eight. A level six course takes two years. For following your two years study, you are given a certificate, a, a guarantee, you know, you're, there's recognition that you have attended college for two years. If you stay on for the third year, you have a level seven ordinary degree. And if you stay on for level eight, you have an honors level eight degree. So whether you enter the college at level six, seven, or eight, it takes four years to complete that course. It's not that you're segregated, that level six students are in one room, level seven in another room, level eight in another room. It is the same course, it's just that it is offered at three different levels. So on their national framework of qualifications, just as I explained there, the higher certificate and the ordinary level and the higher level are two and level uh, two years, three years and four years. So what is extremely important is that when your son or daughter are making their choices, that they choose in the genuine order of preference. So the course that they want most is number one out of the 10 choices. It's, they put that down at number one, first choice. 
don't dwell on the points. The most important thing is what is it that I really, really want to do? What does I want to spend the next three or four years studying and the rest of my life, perhaps, or a great number of years? And then have something there that is a dead cert that if you don't get your number one choice or your number two choice, that there is a course on that list that you will definitely be happy to take. So not everybody gets their first choice. Do you may get your second choice or your third choice? So they are equally as important when listing your course choices as your number one, because if you're offered your second or third choice, you may never be offered your first choice. However, if you are offered your third choice, you stay in the system until all of the colleges fill the spaces that were where you chose the number two or number one. So you are in the lucky position that you could find yourself after the, num the second round offers or third round offers, you could go up to your second choice or your first choice, but you will never be offered any course further down the list than the one that you were offered. Okay, so what do you need uh, for third level? There are three things that you need. You have to meet the college requirements and you have to meet the faculty, the faculty which is whether it's arts or whether it's science or whether it's engineering or medicine or whatever. You must meet those requirements and then you obviously need to have the points as well for the course that you're applying for. So what does that mean? Okay, so most courses uh, say that are um, five, level five, you have you need to have uh, an ordinary six grade in your leaving certificate for level six and seven. Five subjects that you, to enter the level six and seven, as I was talking about there, and you must have six subjects. At least two of those must, must be at a H5 and four at ordinary six. So they are what they would call the college requirements. So level five, you need you need five ordinary six. And for a level eight, you need six subjects. Okay. So the faculties are requirements are like, for example, just give you an example. If somebody wants to do primary school teaching, you may need a H3 or a H4 in Irish in order to be accepted into the course. And also a H4 in maths for engineering. You must have higher level maths for engineering. In the primary, the the, there's a college in Dublin called Marino, and if you come from the Gaeltacht and you're applying for primary school teaching, you must have a H3. If you apply to the other three colleges, they accept a H4 in Irish. And then the point system then, regardless of how many subjects your son or daughter are, is studying, it is the six best subjects that are counted for points purposes. So whether you take seven subjects or eight subjects, they count the best six subjects. So to get an offer, which I was saying earlier, you must satisfy those three requirements. You must satisfy the college requirements, you must satisfy the faculty requirements, and you must satisfy the points requirements. So know what your course is, involves before you apply. Apply in your genuine order of preference, as I said, and apply only apply for courses you genuinely want to do. Because sometimes students put down courses and they say, Usher, I just wanted to fill the space. And they could be offered a course that they never researched or had no interest in. And once you're offered that course, you may never get another offer. So you either have to accept it or you have to, you know, wait a further year perhaps in order to get the course that you really want. And that's just an example there of level how the courses are filled out, so the level eight courses. So you have accounting, horticulture. Uh, this is somebody that in different colleges, so they applied for accounting in Athlone, and then they applied for accounting in Cork. They applied for primary school teaching, etc. And the same with the level seven and level six courses. So you have an option to apply, as I said, for 20 courses in total, six, level six, seven, and or eight, 10, my apologies, level six, seven, and 10 at level eight. Now, some courses consider more than just points. There may be an interview, there may be tests, there may be auditions, there may be a portfolio or a project. And these are usually uh, conducted around Easter time. So what that means is this, the CAO will require and the colleges requires more than your leaving cert. So for example, a student that's taking medicine, they need to do the HVAT. Students that apply for music, they may have an audition. Some colleges where students apply for architecture, they may have to do an aptitude test. Or if they're doing art, they will need a portfolio perhaps. 
Okay, so there, those horses are called restricted horses and they need to be on the CAO form by the 1st of February. That's the 1st of February, 2023. They cannot be added at a later stage, but they can be dropped at a later stage. So if the student comes in March or April and says, I now know I want this particular restricted course, they're going to be too late at that stage because the, the auditions or the interviews, portfolio preparation, all of that will have been done at that particular stage. In May, you will be sent a confirmation of your course choices by the CAO. So as of the 4th of November, your son or daughter can now register with the CAO and it costs 30 euro up until the 20th of January. After the 20th of January to the 1st of February, it's cost 45 euro. So I would recommend that you register now for the 30 euro. OK, so once you register. The, the CAO closes down on the first week in February and then will reopen again in May. And in May, they will send now via email, they will send confirmation of your son or daughter's application and they will be asked to check it carefully to ensure that all of their personal information is correct, that their telephone numbers is correct, that their emails are correct, that their address is correct, because this is the only way that the CAO will notify your son or daughter for any changes or anything that occurs. If there are any errors in anything that they have entered on their application, this is the time to correct this information. So. Then from the fourth, roughly the fourth or fifth of May, as I was saying, the CAO closes down in February. So students between February and May will not be in a position to enter courses because during that period of time, as I mentioned, they will be processing those applications for students who have auditions or have portfolio preparation or have interviews or whatever. So when they open in May, had they entered any subjects or any courses at that stage, they can change their mind and they can continue to change their mind up until the 1st of July at 5.15 p.m. without any extra or any additional charge. So very often when students complete their leaving cert, they may have about two weeks before the 1st of July. And at that time, with the stress of the leaving cert, the study, all of that is finished with. They then, and I recommend that they then go back and revisit courses and the choices that they have made to see that they are still satisfied that they have picked the correct course. And that change of mind, you can change your mind as often as you wish, right up until the 1st of July, okay? So these are the important dates. So CAO opened on the 4th of November, and they will close, closing date for online cheaper applications, as I said, is 30 euro up until the 20th of January. And closing date, for applications after the 20th of January up until the 1st of February will cost 45 euro. So another, um, another uh, area that I want to talk to you about, which is very, very important, has to do with the here and there. So I'll talk to you about that in a minute. In August, courses, uh, courses will, with places will still be available. So for example, when your son or daughter gets an offer or doesn't get an offer, Colleges always have what they call vacant places. You know, there aren't vacant places for very popular courses, but there are still quite a lot of places available. And the CAO will advertise those places following first round offers or second round offers when students have already chosen the course that they wish to take, there will still be vacant places. So sometimes maybe a student will find a course there that they hadn't considered before, or especially those students who haven't received any offer. So, excuse me, the options that you have or students have when they get an offer is they accept the offer. They will have one week to accept that offer, or they may decide they're not ready to go to college for a year. They can actually defer that offer. So they get in touch with the college and they say that they have received an offer, but they wish to defer the course for one year. The college, more than not, will say that's fine. The following year, you need to fill up the CAO again and apply for that particular course because they have kept that particular space for you, regardless of what the change in points may be. If the points for that particular course has risen higher than what your son or daughter got, they still have that place in college. However, if they decide to apply for and enter other courses as well, they lose that privilege 
and they're in the pot with everybody else for courses then. So they, they only they only retain that privilege by just putting down that particular course. So um, as I said, I've just I've just mentioned it there. If if they do apply for that particular course again, they get that offer in what they call round zero before the other offers come out. So as I was mentioning, if you put other courses courses down, you lose that deferred place and you're you're in competition with everybody else. So the, the next very, very important thing that I wish to talk to you about and uh, several students in Leaving Cert at the moment are entitled to here, which is the higher education access route, DARE, the disability access route, and SUSE is the SUSE grant. Okay. So the process has started for applying for here and there since the CAO opened uh, the applications online on the 4th of November. So there are three very important dates for students who are applying through here and there. On the 1st of February, they must indicate that they wish to be considered for here or there or maybe even both. On the 1st of March, there's lots of information online which must be completed on their CAO application. And on the 15th of March, all information which is required by the CAO must be in the CAO office by the 15th of March. Now, I'm here to help and support all the students and yourselves as parents with this process because this may be your first time doing this. So these dates, there's no leeway with the, those dates. You must meet the 1st of February, you must meet the 1st of March and the 15th of March. The SUSE grant, that application won't open until around March or April. So for the here and there applicants, the students get in on lower points. Now you're in competition when you apply for this. There's no guarantee that you will get the place. But for the SUSE grant, you do get, it's a grant, so you do get money. And the important thing about the SUSE grant is that it will, it will cover, if you're successful, it will cover your registration fees. And depending on where you go to college, if you're going to college in Galway and you live near the college, you won't get the full grant. But if you're going, if you're in Limerick or Dublin or Cork or whatever, you will get the full grant. So all of the information for here and there and Susie is on accesscollege.ie. So they just launched a new website a few days ago. So accesscollege.ie for any information other than the information that I'm giving you this evening. And they will also have uh, parents and students information online on the 14th of January. So if you needed to get further information regarding here, there or SUSE application. So finally, in order for your students, your son and daughter and yourselves to be able to be sure that you do not make the wrong choice, you know, get as much information as you possibly can. Read the instructions on your CAO, read the prospectuses and put your courses down in order of preferences and always have a dead cert course. Now there is um, there is a, a fair and in, uh, in called the pathways, there's a careers fair on in the Galmont on Thursday and quite a lot of, of the Leaving Cert students have signed up to attend that as well. It will be, they will be out of school for maximum three hours on Thursday. So it is another opportunity for them to meet colleges. There will also be lots of um, companies there and there will be PLC courses and the Guard will be there and the Army will be there. So there, it's not just the third level colleges. Okay. Other options, as I mentioned at the beginning, is post Leaving Cert courses. These are one year courses where students decide they're not ready to go to college or they may not get the points for their preferred course this year and they will attend a post Leaving Cert course. So they run those courses in GTI in Galway and also Galway CC, which is called Money Militia. And following on from those courses, depending on how well they do in those courses, there are places kept on all courses, what they call QQI courses in third level colleges. So for some students, the Leaving Cert may become irrelevant at that stage and they are taken into college based solely on their success and their results on their post Leaving Cert courses. And also, Apprenticeships have opened up now. There are several apprenticeships available for students. Um, there's also, as I mentioned at the beginning, UCAS. Quite a number of students go 
studying now in Northern Ireland, Scotland, England and Wales. And that process is totally outside of the CAO and it's a different process. And UNICAS again, which is studying in Europe. Some students are now going to Europe as they find it easier to get into courses in Europe. However, there's a cost involved in that and they're moving away from here. So that's my presentation. Uh, I am available to meet any of you anytime as parents. If you want to make an appointment and get in touch with the office, I can meet you after school and meet you at a time that's, that's convenient for both of us. If you have any concerns or queries regarding the whole process of the whole CAO system or outside the CAO system or the here and there, maybe in particular. OK. Mila Margaret, uh, Patricia. Um, so just Marlou making two still a question occur. Who's more taking question with if you have any questions, uh, you can type them in there on the right hand side. And myself and Patricia, uh, well, I'd say Patricia will try and answer them more than uh, myself, but I'll do my best. I just um, take down a few notes here as Patricia was speaking there, like the, the CEO uh, making sure that you have all your correct personal data um, registered with them. Um, it's happened before where somebody puts in an email, but it's an email that they don't check from one month to next month. And in some instances, the CEO were in contact eight or nine times, but that person wasn't as was checking the email. So it's very important what you put down and what contact details you have that are relevant and that maybe you have access to it as well. And or at least you know that the person is using that email and uh, things like that are important to check. So I just wanted to say I don't have access to your son or daughter's CAO account or their password yeah. at all. I'm you know, GDPR, I don't I'm not allowed to look at their accounts, but any time that the CAO are contacting them, they are contacting them for a reason. They're looking for information. So it's extremely important. The first email they will get in May is just asking them to check that their personal details are OK. Now, they might think the next time they get an email, oh, sure, I've done that before, I've checked it. CAO will not get in touch if they're not looking for information. So it's extremely important. And uh, something I forgot to mention that when they sign up for their CAO now, they will not have their examination number. The State Examinations Commission will be sending their examination numbers to the school and also to the CAO. Now the CAO, and I believe it's their, their responsibility to enter that examination number. Very often they don't enter all of the students' examination numbers. So without them going back into their CAO and entering their examination, they risk maybe not getting an offer. So I'll be going around like a parrot all the time saying, did, did you check your CEO? Did you check your CEO? Have you got your examination number? So I will be keeping a very close eye on everybody anyway, but it's just very, very important. They do not ignore any literature, any emails, any texts from the CEO. Mila Margaret, appreciate it. Just catch you on and chin. Um, and will Garmshor in or er fall in Yeah. So talk into yeah. So So we love her because she's in a so okay, so okay, so I'm planning now uh, to make sure uh, Patricia is working through each class doing individual um, sessions with students and by Christmas she will have gone through all four leading cert classes um, and then look if a student has further information they all know who Patricia's office mm -hmm. is and there's no problem at all to call up and uh, it's very uh, Patricia Carroll on chain. Uh, Kestel and show uh, King Cree are going to a jacker and a scholar of the old scholar. So how do you apply for for university scholarships? OK, so there's academic scholarships and you have sports scholarships and there's some creative writing and media scholarships. So some of them you apply for the academic ones, they get automatically based on the leaving cert results. The sports scholarships, the, the closing dates are usually around March or April. So I have put up on teams. Now I am constantly up in, updating the students on teams. So I'm constantly telling them keep checking, keep checking. So I put up and they can show it to you. I put up um, a link where the sports scholarships are there for every college in the country and what the sports scholarships are and what the requirements are. OK, so I'd say if there's a, a certain questionnaire and somebody has a, an angle on a questionnaire about scholarships, just uh, Aberlo, tell them to call up to Patricia, yeah. you know, and we'll make sure that uh, everything is covered. Um, you know, I don't have too many questions. Uh, but we've only two uh, on the on team so far here, so uh, I'll just give it 30 seconds, see if anybody else has Keshtela, Mota Keshtela group. 
that's Phil Curry. I suppose Tivan Mudishin looked up Patricia or Falls of Skull. Um, to Maureen and Kenner Blina, the yearhead available always as well. And she's working with students and making sure we're, you know, everybody's coping, okay, because it's a tough time, especially this time of year. I think as we get past January and February, the students get in a bit of a roll and the year kind of flies along then. But at the moment, there's a lot of work going on, a lot of content, a lot of learning, and I suppose it, it brings us pressures as well on the students. Um, Kestel and Jen, do we enter English or Irish name on the CAO? It doesn't actually matter which you enter. It's just when when they go on to third level, what was happening was whatever um, whatever they registered as, then their scripts in third level would have that name. And some students in the past have found it very difficult to change. So if they registered in Irish and then they wanted down the road, they wanted all their scripts to be in English because they were saying if they went abroad, they didn't know what Patricia Ilarica was. You know, they wanted Patricia O'Flaherty. They were finding it quite difficult to change it. So it doesn't really matter. It's just a preference for the students themselves. But but it's my understanding that whatever whatever name they enter, that's what is passed on to third level college. And that's what will be on their script in third level college. I suppose we know harm that whatever name to put down on the CEO yes. uh, when they register for it, yeah. it's the same name that they use on all their, their exams. Yes. In the leaving yeah. cert, so that they you can know, make so the that, link. That they, yeah, now the biggest link is obviously their examination number. Yeah, that's key to it. But I'd be recommending Vinig Muller just an anum cana usaj earnest scriptina on your leaving cert exams, as you have on the CEO as well. Just that there's no confusion. That there isn't two own colleagues um, uh, uh, sitting the same exams. But uh, it's the examination number that really differentiates everyone uh, in, in in the end. Uh, come on, in Castell and Shin. No, me to go for a win. Neil, okay, Neil in Castell. Shinka, you're right, yeah. Well, according to Gramila Malga, when Fane, I was a Patricia and Shil Gramag, Patricia sucked, they law her, I was in Curry law her, uh, Inter Chinish and told us clear Shin and Curry So, thanks, I just saying thanks to Patricia here for putting together the presentation tonight. Uh, as we said, we are here, myself, the uh, year head, Maureen and Patricia are all here, you know, day and night almost, as it is now, <laughs> um, to help the six years. They're, they're our number one uh, group and primary goal, uh, you know, of all the students we have at the moment to, to make sure we get these people uh, over the line and we get them there in a healthy and happy, as happy as can be, because there is pressures. Todd Dak wrote, we get that, um, but please contact us if you think we can do anything to help. So, Shinny Accorda, Fog Miss Law Live, Big Taffet, Erin Curry Lawrence Show. There's a recording of this, will be up on the school website uh, in case you want to go back over it or if somebody's missed it, you can tell them that it, it will be on the school website in the next 10 to 15 minutes and they can view it then at, at any time. Uh, as so, Gramina Malgov, August Turara, August Ben McCarthy, Glue. Okay, Ethan Watson. Slon, Turara.